I believe, isn't a gift. I know being a designer, this sounds counterintuitive and a little ungrateful, but hear me out. The ability to be creative, according to me, isn't this magical gene that some people are just blessed with and others not. It's not like math. That gene literally skipped me out of my whole family. Creativity is really just a curiosity about everything. It's like a muscle that we flex involuntarily all the time as children. I'm sure all of you know the one question every child constantly asks. Why? This desire to learn and explore and understand why something is, is what all of us have had since we were kids. We are all born creative. In 1968, Dr. George Land conducted a creativity assessment test to select the most innovative engineers and scientists to work for NASA. His assessment was successful and he then decided to try it on children. What he saw was that children exhibited high levels of creativity, which then dropped as the participants aged. He concluded that children are inherently creative and that non-creative behavior was learnt. As children, we're told to reach for the stars and as soon as we reach the 10th grade, we're expected to jump out of the spaceship into specific boxes of professions labelled creative and non-creative. Because of these boxes, we soon begin to convince ourselves that we don't possess this rare gene. We never really lose our creative muscle. It's just not been flexed in a long time. And this has everything to do with our environment. We live in a world that just wants us to choose one thing. Schools, colleges, programs, structures that want to put us in boxes, give us labels and feel satisfied. They want to create order in the chaos. We go from being uninhibited, fearless children to easily demotivated, instantly fearful adults. Creativity is always inside us. So what do we do to relearn it? How do we learn to flex our creative muscles once again? Seven years ago, I got into a top design school in the country to study visual design. It was the first day of orientation and the dean of our college stood in front of us. The first thing he said was, this week is your orientation week. You will be unlearning everything you know up until now and we will begin again with a clean slate. And at that moment, the only question in my mind was where have I landed up and how fast can I get out? It made no sense to me at all. Even the activities we did through the week seemed random, childish, and not quite meeting my artistic aspirations. It took me four years of college and three years after college, when I began to write a TEDx talk about it, to realize just how much I have relied on this unlearning to be able to consistently channel creative ideas. I believe in order for us to relearn creativity, it is essential that we unlearn non-creative behavior. Now, how exactly do we do that? See, creativity is something that is constant yet unpredictable. It is something that requires a designated time and space in our lives. It's something all of us do in our own unique way and we feel dissatisfied when we don't do it. It's something we inherently want to do every single day. Well, there's something else that all of us are very familiar with, which fits each of the criteria I've mentioned. Creativity is a lot like pooping. Yes, you heard it right. Just as going to poop is an involuntary action, we have to unlearn five things to make sure creativity becomes one too. Number one, unlearn that you will ever be 100% ready. Just like the pressure to poop doesn't ask you if you're ready, the opportunity to be creative will not come to you when you're ready. We procrastinate and we push off doing new things because we tell ourselves, oh, I'm not ready yet, I'm still figuring things out. We never think this way when we have to go to the loo. When you gotta go, you really just gotta go. Andy Warhol rightly said, don't think about making art, just get it done. Let everyone else decide if it's good or bad, if they love it or hate it. While they are deciding, make even more art. You will never know what a creative process is going to look like. You can imagine and hypothesize, but you will never actually know unless you take that leap of faith. I was approached by a friend to start a street art collective in my city. 
to tell the stories of the shops and the shop owners who've been here for decades. I had never done something like that before and I was terrified. I didn't feel ready, but the truth is I would never feel ready. Going for it anyway led to some valuable learnings, some beautiful friendships and a newfound confidence in what I could achieve. Saying yes the first time prepares you a little bit for the second time. The next time you feel unprepared for something, just do it anyway to see what happens. Say yes before you are ready. Unlearn that you will ever be ready. Number two, do you think about how many times you go to poop? Or begin questioning your abilities to go if you have a bad stomach or you haven't been able to go? No, you show up every day no matter what the results are. You know one good poop doesn't dictate the next and one bad poop doesn't either. All it does is probably teach you to keep drinking more water and maybe not order from that strange street food place again. Unlearn that one success or one failure is the end. My final graduation project was picked up by a number of newspapers and websites. There were interviews every day, I was getting featured in places daily and I thought I was Shah Rukh Khan. This was life from now on. Soon enough, I realized it does not quite work like that and that I would have to work just as hard or even harder the next time. Success was temporary. It was like any other experience. I had the opportunity soon after to illustrate a comic book. It wasn't something I had ever done before, but I said yes anyway. Although we got some super successful reviews and a great launch, I kept comparing it to the success of my graduation project and somewhere I felt like I had failed. What I realize now is that book taught me to be comfortable with a new way of storytelling. And I love making comics now. The feeling of failure was temporary too. It was like any other experience. The magic of creativity is in the process. Successes and failures are merely experiences. Don't be motivated by either. Be motivated by the process of learning. Show up every day no matter what and do your thing. Number three. Now the first two unlearnings seem fairly straightforward. But if there's anything I know about being creative is that it is anything but predictable. You may have a week of things running smoothly and suddenly one day there's a block in the pipe. Creative ideas will refuse to come out no matter what you do. This is what artists often call a creative block. You must unlearn that creativity is a button. There are two things that will lead you out of this blocked state. Awareness and patience. Remember how I said creativity is like a curiosity about everything? Well, curiosity is fueled by observation. Try cutting out your distractions and see what's happening inside and in your environment. Give your mind time to think, to explore, to question and to understand. How many times have you gone to the loo and simply waited? Waited for the right time, for the pipes to unclog. So wait. Get bored and let your mind wander because that's when the magic happens. I've been through many creative blocks over the years and in fact, I was in one around the time I started writing this talk. No points for guessing what led me out of it. Let me let you in on a little secret. The most creative ideas don't happen at the desk, they actually happen in the bathroom. Number four, remember those boxes that we were made to jump into? Well, old habits die hard and the need to create new boxes even within creative experiences begins cropping up. You may feel compelled to restrict your creativity or question it based on somebody else. You must unlearn that creativity looks like one thing and stop comparing yourself to someone else. I know it's easier said than done, but you don't compare your time in the bathroom to somebody else, do you? I'm certain it does not even cross your mind. That's because you know each person is unique and so their poop will be too. Your creative journey is what you choose it to be, not what anybody else defines for you. You may be familiar with the term jack of all trades, master of none. Well, very recently I found out that that is not the entire quote and the whole thing reads jack of all trades, master of none, though oftentimes better than the master of one. This revelation was life-changing for me 
because ever since I was a kid, I was Jack. Somebody who was interested in and fairly decent at multiple things, but unable to pick just one. For a long time, I felt like I wasn't a real creative person because I wasn't able to choose a box. It was important for me to unlearn that creativity looks like one thing. Today, I'm still Jack. I love dipping my toes into a million things and that has led to some diverse projects and wonderful opportunities. And now, the fifth and possibly most important thing to unlearn. Unlearn that the creative journey is finite. I've been maintaining a journal since I was little and recently I felt the need to share some of my reflections with the world through a different medium. I began making videos along with little illustration talking about my thoughts. A few months after, a client approached me saying they came across this video and they wanted me to work on a project with the same style. A week later, another project, then another. I got to work on three super exciting opportunities simply because I had shared a thought. And I'm certain that sharing the work I do for these projects will lead to something else. Creativity is a little bit like a yawn. It keeps going around and coming around. Sometimes you are the one sharing a creative thought with somebody else. Sometimes it is being shared with you. And let me tell you, a creative thought is difficult to get rid of. Our brains love chewing on ideas like these and feel compelled to add to them. Nothing I have told you today is a completely unique creative idea. It simply comes from creative conversations I've heard, books I've read and experiences I've had. I have just done the job of chewing on them, passing them through my system and by now I think you know where this is going. Now I know what you may think. I wish it were that easy to be creative as easily as we go to the bathroom. But you know what? It can be. One of the biggest misunderstandings about creativity is that it's all about making art. It is so much more than that. It is the magical process and everything we learn while trying to make something new. It is to share an idea we are passionate about which otherwise will never be heard. It is to shed light on what's important or what may be taken for granted or forgotten. And it is a part of you. Did you have a hobby that you started having less and less time for because life got in the way? An idea you wanted to pursue but stopped out of fear of judgment or failure? Or do you simply want to get out of that non-creative box? So try. Give creativity a shot. Give it space and time in your life. Start saying yes before you are ready and choose what you want it to look like. It will always come back to you. Start showing up for it consistently and see how it becomes like anything else that comes naturally. And let me tell you, you may not choose to share the details of the experience, but you will feel it. It feels lighter, even relieving. Thank you all so much for listening. And I cannot wait to see all the wonderful ideas all of you poop out.